everything is canceled. All the cons are canceled. Let's stay home. Everything is canceled when you're living in a pandemic. Woo! Because literally everything is canceled. Hello. Everything is canceled. All the cons are canceled. Now we have to stay home. Legit, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Shit Cosplayers Say, where we inform you that literally everything has been canceled. Alas. Alas. Really, guys? We're not kidding. <laughs> like, everything has been canceled since the last time the two of us were able to record together. International Cosplay League for 2020 has been canceled. So we have now rolled over to be Team USA 2021. Planet Funk Con is now canceled. We got confirmed for Cosplay Con, but now it's been canceled. <laughs> they might do an online event. Waiting on some more info on that. We'll let you guys know when we get the dates. Anime Iowa is canceled. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everything is canceled. And Anime Iowa is also looking into doing an online convention. We will let you know. This does all mean that all current booked live shows have been canceled. Regardless of whether or not CosplayCon or Anime Iowa do an online convention we will probably try to do at least one live show on twitch for y'all within like the june july august time period we do have one set of good news we are now going to colossal con if it's not canceled. because <laughs> because colossal con <laughs> postponed and now since we're not going to spain this year we can go to Colossal Con instead. As long as they don't cancel. I did submit shit cosplayers say to Colossal Con, so we should find out sometime in July if we have been accepted or not. Colossal Con was actually the first convention we did this panel full on, so it would be kind of fun to return a year later and do it again with its new and improved version. Yes. And maybe it'll be a drunk o'clock again. Ooh. With Kalahari chalices. I kind of asked for not drunk o'clock, but like if they put us at drunk o'clock, then they do, I guess. I mean, I'm down for whatever. It'll be a good time. Also, speaking of good times, good news for all of our friends in Minnesota. We are planning on coming back to Anime Fusion this fall. We're judging... We don't know much else yet. Panels are still pending. Not sure what we're going to do, but we'll let you know as we figure that out. Yeah, our panels are kind of going to be based around what is submitted by other attendees. Since we're not guesting, we're more coming to help the cosplay department. So we will find out which of our panels the cosplay department wants after panel submissions are open and we know what's all available. The really cool thing that Anime Fusion does is they actually have a panel room dedicated to cosplay. So all of the cosplay-related panels are in one very conveniently located room. You could just sit there all day and just be engulfed with cosplay for your entire day. I really, really do like that about the venue that they're using and the fact that they have the dedicated room because pretty much at any point in time there's a cosplay event going on there so you might have a couple of one-off panels that might end up somewhere else just due to scheduling conflicts or if the size needs to be different but pretty much if it's cosplay it's in that room which i think is just great because there's no guesswork as oh where's this panel room at nope if you want cosplay it's all in the same place so they are going to have a pretty sweet lineup of panelists this year. You're going to have to wait and check on the website to see, but there are some pretty awesome cosplayers coming, and we highly recommend coming to Fusion. It's one of those small but mighty cons, and you go and you have a good time, and you leave with 
warm, fuzzy feelings afterward. Yep. And like Elle said, we're not quite sure what we're going to be running yet. We're going to kind of round out whatever isn't being presented by everybody else. So whether that's something we've done before or maybe something entirely new, we'll just have to wait and find out. If you have something that you would like to see us do at Fusion, you can DM us or email us at podcastscs at gmail.com and we will definitely take those suggestions into consideration when we talk to the cosplay department. Um, We're very excited to come back and see our Minnesota friends. I think that'll be a really good time. And it's not till October, so hopefully it will happen. (laughs) Everyone, knock on wood and cross your fingers. Please. Because at this point, we're running out of cons. Like, we may just be shooting for C2E2 2021 at this point, guys. Maybe. (laughs) Which, I mean, I'm down. so far in the future. (laughs) You know, part of all these cons canceling, we have started dabbling in the online paneling medium. So we did a live show of Shit Cosplayers Say for Articon on Twitch a couple weekends ago. And uh, we had some technical difficulties at first, but it went pretty well overall. I think considering the fact that neither of us pretty much have ever streamed anything, that we did pretty well with it overall. Setting up the OBS so that it would use the, you know slideshow program that we use for the game board which required like two different screens and all sort of complicated things because we're also not twitch affiliates which means you can't invite other people to stream on your stream you have to get creative and get like skype to come in on a box on your obs so it was an adventure but it did work out pretty well we've got some kinks with the game board to work out Special thanks to tech support. Yes, special (laughs) thanks to my tech support for coming and programming that entire thing for me because I had no clue what I was doing. I was surprised, given that this panel is so incredibly interactive, I expected it to be much more difficult to use a chat to do this interactive panel, and it really wasn't that bad at all. No, it was a good time. Um, Everybody that gave me feedback on... The event all said that they had a great time with it, even with our few little technical hiccups. And we had some people that were having problems because they had never used Twitch before. So they were having some technical difficulties on their end, or maybe like the video wasn't showing. So we had to be extra descriptive and maybe kind of shout out to them directly to see if we could give them some info so that they could still participate with the rest of the group. But overall, it was it was a good time. So special thanks to Arda for hosting that for us. That was definitely, definitely needed, I think, in the community. So I do think when things slow down a little bit for the both of us, we may use Twitch on and off in the future to do some things, you know, kind of be able to chat and interact with y'all because we miss that. Like, that's our favorite part of going to con is interacting with all the con goers. And that's been harder to do in this medium than we're used to. Especially when... Literally, all your guesting contracts get canceled for the entire year. Postponed, I mean. Well, yeah, and I mean, we don't, we also don't know. People are already asking, well, are you going to be guests next year then? Um, We don't have that confirmed for any of the conventions. Most cons have been rolling their guests over, but we don't know for sure. So we'll let you guys know when we know. But the cons have a lot more pressing issues to deal with that are bigger than whether or not their cosplay guests are going to be there next year. And we understand that. Absolutely. They've got way more on their plate than just us. In, In the guesting hierarchy, the cosplay guest is at the bottom of the totem pole, guys. So we usually get notified of things last And that's fine, because I get it. You got to make sure your voice actors are taken care of and your vendors and, you know, your location. And, you know, these cons are, you know, rushing to try to make sure that they have everything set up for next year so they can start selling, selling tickets as soon as possible to help them afford the event. So, like, we totally get it. And we will let you guys know when we know for sure if we're being moved over or not. My guess is probably for most of them. Yeah, as long as there's no conflict with 
something else that we already have committed. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to. But we'll see what happens. Don't want to speak out of turn. <laughs> I'm extra sad because we don't get to MC Anime Iowa and do the 10-minute skit anymore. Yep, they're just going to have to wait for the 10-minute skit. That also means that our writer follows us for another year. Oh, good. So it's just going to get longer. Don't forget to keep thinking about things for Phil. Speaking of Phil, I found Phil in Animal Crossing. Oh, really? I did. I, I bought a mini fridge in Animal Crossing. Oh, good. There's a picture on the Instagram of Phil in Animal Crossing. Because they had a mini fridge for sale and I needed it in my life. We're also looking at getting a game called Phil the Fridge for our live shows in the future. <laughs> please <laughs> it's it's required it's a game that i think is from maybe like sweden or something i'm not a hundred percent sure but you know how on instagram the way you can check to see if you're being shadow banned which happens to us frequently um especially if we've been posting popular content that has some blocked hashtags so it happens a lot to like harley cosplayers my hero academia a lot of those hashtags get flagged so we did have another string of being banned on our Lavi cosplay account. And so I was just checking hashtags and things. And so one of the ways to see if you're being completely banned is whether or not your content shows up in a unpopular hashtag. So I was like, oh, I'm going to use fill the fridge, right? And so then I checked the hashtag fill the fridge and like the three things that I've ever tagged with that are in there. Along with a handful of posts about this game that's a plastic refrigerator that you put food-shaped, like, plastic items to within a certain amount of time before the fridge spins and spits them all out at you. I need this in my life. <laughs> it is. It's got, like, this dopey face and, like, the back of it has the openings for, like, the plastic food. And they're all color-coded, and you have to see who can get all of their pieces in and then keep them in there if he decides to start to spin. They're adorable, and I love it. <laughs> we'll post a picture of it on the Instagram, but it's really cute, and I kind of want it because I feel like that would be a really fun thing to do during the live show because... Normally, we have a lot more interactive things with prizes during our live shows than we're able to do when we do them on Twitch. I'm trying to find some different fun things. It's just harder to do on Twitch. But that might be something that we'll add for whenever we get to be back in person with all of you again. Because it's just really cute. Along with like the actual fill the fridge, because we still need to actually get Phil. Yes. This, is, this isn't a replacement for Phil. No. It's like mini me, Phil. <laughs> mini me, Phil. <laughs> it's our mini, mini fridge. Yes, it's a mini, mini fridge. <laughs> good, good, good. It's a mini, mini Phil. Mini, mini Phil. I can't wait. Yes. I need, I need I that need in my life. I need to go order that. I forgot. I should do that. I need it right now. Right now. Because it might take like two months for it to get here. So <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I should probably order that. Yep. I need it right uh... now. This stuff, it just, it makes me sad that we won't be doing that show. And, you know, we could be getting mad right now at these cons. And we're not. That would be silly. Because it's not their fault that all these things have been canceled. Right. And I know that a lot of people like to complain about the timing of the cancellations, but that's not their fault either. Would you like to review with them the contract language in which prevents them from just randomly deciding to cancel a convention? So most contracts have clauses relating to acts of God or force majeure where if, if something outside of the control of either party is the cause for the cancellation, pretty much everybody's off the hook for their end of the deal. Unfortunately, depending on where you live and the jurisdictions there, whether they be municipalities or counties or the actual state, everybody has kind of different criteria for when they're making these decisions, 
how long these decisions can remain in effect and how frequently they can re-up those decisions. So depending on where that falls in the timeline with your particular contracted event is going to determine, hey, is my insurance going to kick in and give me all this money that I lost? Or am I just out everything and still have to pay for everything because we're canceling? And most cons cannot afford to pay for an entire event and get zero revenue in return. I'm not sure there are any cons that can afford to pay for an event and get zero revenue in return. Well, it would be very difficult for any con. Like, I even so. think, like, Reed Pop would probably struggle with that. Like, that's a lot to ask of an event. It's a lot to ask of an event, especially with how closely budgets are monitored, especially for bigger events. It would be very, very, very difficult to recover. Now, if you do have a chain of events, they might be able to pull revenue in from somewhere else to cover it in the meantime. But ultimately, that's not a position that you want any business or nonprofit to be in. So they have to wait for the contract terms or for the hotel or the convention center or whatever to be like, hey, maybe we should go ahead and postpone this push it back so that they're off the hook for the funds that they owe for their portion of the contract. Because there's a big difference. Obviously, everybody knows that this is going on. It's a worldwide problem. But if this is a problem, and we know it's a problem, and we want to be responsible because things are not better in our area, you're not going to have a good idea of what the area is going to look like until maybe just four, six, eight weeks out. It's kind of hard to make those projections months and months in advance. There's a big difference between me going, you know, I don't think we're going to have this event. And let's say the governor is stepping in and saying, you can't have this event. One of those is covered under your force majeure rules and the other is not. The government saying you can't do this because your event has too many people will help kick in like your event insurance so that you're not out all that money versus if you just go, eh, I don't think we're going to do this. Your venue might not let you off the hook. So the cons are trying to wait for that window, which is probably why you've probably seen the cancellations happening within like a six to eight week period. That is a common time for that to be occurring. It's hard to know. You know, like we talked about NakaCon before, they had no idea. Like they were forced by their governor to close that day well and that's one of those things too that the particular situation with that particular convention where it's already like day of hey guys sorry but we can't do this that was at the beginning of all of this when things were just starting to close now for the most part you're going to have a little bit better of an idea because things are already closed and we're either extending those closures adjusting those terms or starting to reopen. So you're going to have a little bit better of an idea going forward, a little bit more notice in the future as far as what something's going to happen. I would go ahead and plan on it happening. And then if it doesn't, you're just extra prepared for next time. But you are unlikely at this point to have a Naka con situation where it happens the day of the con, because now we're aware of what's going on. Like they didn't have a heads up. All of this stuff was just starting at that point. But I know that a lot of people are posting being very concerned that that's going to happen to them for their con. That is highly unlikely at this point. Most conventions are very on top of this and are watching for that time period for when they're in that window to safely make this decision for themselves financially, but also for all of us. You know, the con runners just want everybody to be safe and nobody wants to be known as COVID con. You don't want to be that con that went ahead and had your con when maybe you shouldn't have. And then you spread either COVID in that particular metropolitan area or people get it at your event, swap it around and then take it back to where they live. Nobody wants to be that event when they go to do the contact tracing is, hey, where did these people? Oh, all of these people went to this event. No, nobody wants to do that. I guess if these cons got in really big trouble, they could, you know, 
Friday night of the con ask everyone to donate them money so they can pay for their convention and then offer an extra hour in the ball pit as like extra hour in the ball pit. Can you imagine how unsanitary a ball pit would be right now? Also, if y'all don't know what DashCon is, please look it up. (laughs) Oh, boy. Please. We will at some point do a cons of old episode, but DashCon lives in infamy in the Chicago area. In infamy. It was a Tumblr convention, right? I think so. Yes. And they hadn't paid most of their contracts and so like friday evening on the con they were basically like everybody donate money so we can have the con tomorrow to be fair (laughs) most of your conventions pretty much all of your conventions that are not that con don't do that as like compensation for donations they offered like an extra hour in this like baby pool ball pit it's a it's literally one of those plastic kiddie pools not even like one of the big ones one of those hard formed like six foot plastic kiddie pools with ball pit balls it's in it. so sad we'll post a picture of it this was also the con oh, where i wasn't boy. qualified to judge but we'll talk about that in another time Oh, goodness. (laughs) That's pretty much the end of the story (laughs) is they they told Elle that she was not qualified to judge. Everybody else that submitted with our group was qualified and they were very excited about us. But Elle was not qualified to judge (laughs) at DashCon. Well, and I know that people are also starting to get upset that a lot of cons are canceling instead of postponing. But the postponing is happening because we are so uncertain at this point if even the fall is going to be a good time to have a convention. And postponing costs them money. You know, they still have to keep gathering guests. They still have to gather vendors. And it's more money that potentially could be lost. And so for a lot of cons, it's actually financially safer for them to just say, "We're, we're done. And save it all for next year. Well, and there are some things that obviously they can go ahead and roll over. But there are a lot of expenses for conventions that don't roll over from year to year. If you get specialty signage for your panel programming, if you print program books, if you print t-shirts, badges that have the specific dates and year on them, any of that kind of promotional material is only good for those dates the first time. So if you're going to move it to three or four months down the road, unless you're going to take like a Sharpie and go yes. through and write new dates on everything. And if you've already had your program books printed, there's a really, really, really good chance that pretty much none of your programming is going to be in the exact same spot that it was You before. just have to get stickers printed and put them over all the dates. Oh, okay. And then it moves them to the new date. That's all you have to do. You just print, like, label stickers, and you stick the new date over the old date, and then you can use your badges and your program books. You can't use your program books if none of your panelists can still come. (laughs) To be fair, though, what con gets their program book printed more than, like, two weeks before? Well, but I'm thinking also to some of these other events like NakaCon, where they were already at the hotel and set up. But they were a very unfortunate occurrence that probably will not happen again in this situation. I guess, honestly, I would just do an online program if I had to move my con at that point instead of trying to reprint it. It'd be like, download this PDF to your smartphone. Boom. And there's enough program apps, too, that you can use for that sort of thing. I mean, ColossalCon uses a program app, so they don't even have to worry about it. Well, and there's a lot of venues, too, that aren't necessarily going to have the room for an event that far down the road. I mean, if you're looking, let's say, fall, for example, that's still, like, in the middle of wedding season. So a lot of these venues have already booked up with other events that are not 
conventions that are going to be in competition where maybe they're using part of the venue so the whole venue isn't available for you and they can't host an event that size. Well, yeah, especially for our large events like Anime Central legit could not book that many hotels again for the same weekend. Oh, absolutely. ASEN's dependent on like four or five hotels plus the convention center for all their programming. And so many people. Well, that too. Yeah, I mean, in order to fit 30 plus thousand people, you've got to have the space. You know, the Kalahari is massive. That's how Colossal Con was able to do it. Well, and the other thing you have to remember, too, is con runners, for the most part, are volunteers that put their blood, sweat, and tears into making these events the best events they can be. Nobody runs a convention that isn't passionate about that convention. It just There's no way. It's not sustainable. You cannot staff a convention full time and dedicate that much time and money outside of the event and not care about it. I mean, when I was a con runner, I used to have to drive upwards to an hour, maybe every two weeks. It was maybe once a month for a couple months, but pretty much clockwork every two to three weeks, I was spending maybe 20 to 30 bucks on gas, depending on where we were going. Typically, there was food involved, so it involved eating out. I mean, I was spending upwards of $50 a month in just expenses to go to these meetings. As a poor broke college kid at the time, I mean, and hours and hours, I was driving an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on where the meeting was being held in each direction. And then we're at the meeting. And then, of course, there's going to be your social time afterwards, typically. This was before, of course, a lot of stuff was done over Zoom or Google Classrooms just because that kind of technology wasn't available to us or to use Skype or Discord on a regular basis. Time is an expense. The closer you get to the event, the more of that you're dedicating. And it nobody wanted to postpone or cancel the event. And nobody wants to put on a half-assed event. So if we push this event a couple months down the road... That gives us that many months less to focus on making next year the best that it can be. The con runners for our for-profit cons have to have some passion in it to get it done. Because believe it or not, friends, even for-profit cons don't make a whole lot of money. These events are extremely expensive to put on. They're not like rolling in the dough. Or anything. No. And so much of the money goes back into the event to make it bigger and better for next year for you guys, the attendees, and to get bigger and better guests. Typically, the more well-known your guest is, the busier they are, the more expensive they are to book because they're going to have other events going on. They have lives outside of conventions and they're recording or they're writing or they're filming, whatever they happen to be doing. So their time is also super valuable to them. So that's a commodity. It's just, cons are expensive. And nobody wants to go halfway. And most of our con runners are volunteer, um, particularly in the anime convention world. Most anime conventions are not-for-profit, which means that typically they aren't getting paid a salary or anything like that to run the convention. There's a lot of anime conventions where their staff members still have to pay for their own hotel rooms and their badges. We have to remember without the con runners, there would be no conventions. We would not have our safe space to enjoy our hobbies and interact with each other and learn about techniques and experience contests and have photo shoots and have meetups and have the joy that is a convention weekend without these con runners. So it's important now more than ever that we show them some support. Because it is unfortunate that I've seen 
on a lot of Facebook forums, in particular, con runners getting attacked for conventions being canceled. And, you know, it's okay to be disappointed right now. Absolutely. That's completely natural to feel that way. And it's going to feel like a bigger deal than it would if it got canceled for something else. You know, right now we're in what is typically considered a collective trauma where the entire world is experiencing this massive upset to their daily lives. So our level of fight or flight, your level of being on guard, essentially, that baseline is much higher than it usually is right now because things are really uncertain and nobody really knows what's going to happen next. And so when you have a baseline that is higher than usual, so that anxiety level, that ready to fight, that ready to have an emotional response is already heightened, which means it's not going to take as much stimuli to throw you into an emotional response. You may have a larger, possibly more angry, more upset response to things than you would if the rest of our environment was normal right now. That may mean that this is going to hit you a lot harder than you ever thought it was going to. And it's okay. Absolutely. Like, feel your disappointment. You know, find the ways that you need to accept it. And that may be doing some of these at-home conventions. It may be doing some of this contest. It may be like us right now, taking a break. Because I know for me, with my levels being where they're at and still working full time, I can't really handle the cosplay thing right now. But that's okay. That's okay. Like You don't need to be stressed that you don't have work in progress and all of those things right now. You know, it's good to feel your emotions. It's good to understand them and let them happen. But it's not healthy to take them out on somebody else. You don't need to lash out at your con runners at this point in time. I know that you're disappointed, but so are they. There are a couple things you can do to help be supportive of them right now. The biggest one financially is going to be to roll your badge over. Or if you haven't purchased a badge yet, as soon as they open it up for their next con, go ahead and buy one then. Maybe budget that extra money that you would have gone to two years. Upgrade a VIP. They're going to have a cash flow issue now. They still have expenses, even though they're not holding an event right now. Whether that's domain registration, PO boxes, web hosting their upgraded conferencing software, they have expenses that they're still going to have to be able to account for. So if you can afford to roll your badge over, go ahead and do it. Maybe give them a shout out. Tell them what your favorite part was about last year. If you want to post on social media to them, say, hey, I really liked this. I hope that you guys can bring that back. Don't focus on all the negative. Try to be uplifting to each other. You will make their day if you post something nice. I had multiple con runners message me after a post that we did on Lavi Cosplay, just thanking for the support and the nice words that we said to the con runners. And the one thing they wanted me to convey to everyone is, please send us some nice words because our hearts are breaking right now. And if your event of choice happens to run virtual content, go ahead and support it. Go ahead and log on to their stream and share their posts. Go ahead and show them that love, even though you guys can't be together in person. We're all in this together. And instead of going against each other because we're upset about what's happening in the world, we need to come together and support each other. 
And I think overall, everybody's done a really good job oh, of that yeah. so far. I mean, things have definitely improved from March to now as far as how people are responding to cancellations and, you know, how people are trying to stay more positive. But it's hard. It it wears on you, you know, especially when it's hard to see the end in sight for everything that's going on right now. You know, we, there's a lot of support for the cosplayers, but we don't see a lot of support for the congoers. So we just wanted to give them a little bit of the support that they deserve in this since they are also going through a really hard time right now. With that, we would like to share with you our little tribute that we wrote for the con runners all over the world. To those that boldly go where no one else wants to go. To the people that deal with the bills, the organization, and the massive amounts of arcade equipment. To those that have to manage the drunken con-goers, the rude baseball parents, the Karens, and the occasional ambulance. To those that bravely serve our community, handling catastrophes we never see or hear about. To those that give us a place to be who we are, a place to call home. We salute you, con runners everywhere. End scene. So in our work meetings, every day, somebody has to come with an inspirational quote to leave the group with, whether it's just a word and definition or a lyric, or a quote from somebody famous, or even just some heartfelt words. And I had thought of one today that I was going to share with my work group, but I feel like I also want to share it with our friends here now. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> prep for that. And it is, never going to give you up, never going to let you down, never gonna run around and desert she you. She didn't tell me she was doing this. Never gonna make you cry. Uh. Never gonna say goodbye. Why? Never <laughs> gonna tell a lie and hurt you. I hate it. I hate it so much. You're welcome and I just lost the game. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. This was shit cosplayers say. Why are you like this? You've been listening to Shit Cosplayers Say, an LVC production. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcast SCS. Our website is lavicosplay.com. Have a fun, crazy con or cosplay-related story? Absurd cosplay question? Or just something in general to share with us? Email us at podcastscs at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should.